Hello guys, in this video I want to show you how can we evaluate the thermal response test results and uh, how can we find the thermal conduct and thermal resistance of borehole. Uh, you can see here data is given here for each line we have one data and uh, here dates and the inlet temperature and outlet temperature and four areas are given. Just we need to copy of this data and we need to just uh, pass to here and also we need to correct, we need to look that uh, the data is uh, that is logged correctly or not. That's why we need uh, some other column. Yes, you uh, open up another columns here, here, uh, date. Uh, if you look the data in the first uh, 10 or 11 data is uh, logged as uh, time interval one minute and after some point it is logged as two minutes. That's why I uh, added here until here one minute for each data. From this point I need to add two minutes. Here, uh, like that, uh, it is added here. Uh, also, dollar I need here. Okay, just I need to extend this column on the end of the date, end of the data. Here, I need to add the one minute for each data until this point, and after this point, it's going to be two minutes interval. Here, I added also the seconds. Uh, here, uh, here, just I need to use the ln function from the Excel uh, for this cell. Uh, for I need to extend end of the data. And I agree, lnt and also t in, t out, t out so, but I need the t average in my calculation. That's why I put another column here. I added average here, t average, and I extend the end of the data here. Also, I need the q. Uh, the heat fluxes, uh, you know, how can I calculate it? MCPT, so like that. Okay. But if, uh, to calculate the heat fluxes, I need to know the borehole properties. Uh, for example, here, it is given here that this diameter of the borehole, 100 centimeter, uh, radius is 100 centimeter. Here is the outer pipe diameter, this is inner pipe diameter. And you have to also thermal divisibility is given here. I just need to put here also the CP and rho on the of the fluid, and I just need to write my formula here. Yeah, I wrote the formula here, MCP delta T, and uh, here, this is my uh, heat flux is, as what. And uh, also to calculate the thermal conductivity, I need also thermal critic. Uh, you know that from our uh, lecture notes, this equation, this equality is valid until after this time steps, uh, I need to find this time. So what is that? I need to just uh, multiply the r uh, square r with five, and uh, I need to divide by alpha. Yeah, uh, this calculation I use alpha, but uh, uh, square meter per second, and I just put here five uh, r b square and or alpha. I get here the, as a second time critic. Also, I need uh, as a minute. I can calculate better. Uh, and I need to just uh, divide by the 60 and uh, I give a unit decimal. I found the time criteria at 927 minutes. It means that I need to use the data between these two time intervals for it to start from 927 to end of the data. So it is 1455. And uh, in this area, I need to calculate the heat fluxes. Here, uh, I uh, calculate the average in this area from 476 to 1454. And this is for all the boreholes, uh, but I need to have prime, uh, Q prime, the unit heat fluxes, it is sort of one watt per, per meter. Uh, to calculate the lambda, I need to know also the slope of this term, uh, average temperature change in the logarithmic time scale. That's why I need to add another uh, plot here. Uh, it's going to be uh, represent. Uh, it started from uh, x values uh, will be yeah x values is uh, lmt and the uh, y values t average data and my uh, data looks like like that. I just need to add the trend line here from here and uh, also I need uh, this equation and uh, this uh, r square. Here, uh, I know here from the slope is, is 2.0.5, and I just put here the slope, and uh, I, I use this formula, and uh, from here I get uh, this uh, thermal conductivity of this 